thinks because you're a zombie, you don't know good coffee. Well, they're wrong. We have very active lifestyles. It's not all wandering the countryside aimlessly or scaring passing motorists. And we all love a good cup of joe. And there's only one brew that gets my seal of approval. Deadly Grounds Coffee is my guilty pleasure. Bold, robust, delicious. It's coffee that can wake the dead. <laughs> With over a dozen different roasts and flavors, Deadly Grounds can satisfy the most finicky of coffee addicts. The aroma is so intoxicating, it brings all of my neighbors out of the woodwork. Deadly Grounds coffee, coffee to die for and zombie approved. It's good to get a little deadly. Use the front door! Oh, they're so disgusting. Persons under 18 will not be admitted. Happy Wednesday, everybody. You're watching Still Token With. My name is Leo. I'm the mon monkey behind the keyboard here. I almost messed that up. <laughs> uh, we can have an awesome show scheduled for you, as always. And uh, hey, you're not Ben. Oh, sorry. I had oh. you muted there, Jeff. <laughs> oh, you did? Why? Uh, for some reason, you became unmuted during the, tr uh, the uh, intro. So. Huh. Okay. Well, that's a little weird. Uh, no, I'm not Ben. I'm Jeff, as everybody should know. Ben is on vacation. He's out having fun, you know. Uh, so we swapped it out because last week I was on vacation, so I wasn't able to do the show. Yeah, so and that's how we roll. You know, he's actually going to try to uh, be on tonight, but I guess a squirrel is uh, chewing on the internet cables for him. So yeah, it's because uh, we had a meeting earlier, and it was um, um, I'll use the word sketchy at best. Yeah. You know, in, out, freeze, unfreeze. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. And uh, so... So we have a special, yeah, we have a special co-host, right? Right, right? Jaja's joining do, us do. again. Jaja, we you know, we'll have Jar Jar we'll do it again. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's me, Jar Jar Jeremy, once again, in for, well, this week I'm in for Ben. Usually I'm here for Jeff, because Jeff, you usually take a lot of vacations. No. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I just happened, I was in Alaska for two weeks, so that, you know, uh, ah. but that was a special trip, you know, so, you know, that don't count. You can't count that. Oh, so That's there's going to be another vacation coming? Uh. No, 
not, not yeah. in the near future. <laughs> I would, I wish, but no, not in the near future. Well, unfortunately, you know, it is what it is. Am I introducing our 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 the real guests tonight? Yes. Well, tonight we have the pleasure of meeting and interviewing an amazing human being who's acted, directed, produced, danced, modeled, et cetera, et cetera. Tonight, we are still talking with Lee Purcell. Yay! Hello, hello. I'm Welcome, Lee. You guys. Thank <laughs> you. It's a great pleasure. Thank you for joining us tonight. Of course. This is quite an honor. Yes, it is. Oh, yes, well, it is. Why? <laughs> Well, well, I mean, you know, I'm going to be honest. Let me for let me, everything we can't right talk to you about. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, well, and that's cool. I get that, and I'm not. But I, I will say that going through your resume, I'm not going to mention anything specific. But can't. I grew up watching an awful lot of stuff that you were in. Oh, cool! A ton of it. A ton of it. Yeah. You know, well, and I didn't even I, I didn't put the, the all the pieces together until I until I started really doing the research. I'd be like, oh, oh yeah. Oh, that. Like, no, it I is. Right I remember that. that. Yeah, I remember is. that. You Maybe know? we should explain to everybody yeah, I, why we can't talk about uh, film and TV. And that I I've think done. that's a great idea. If if you could explain for, especially for us that are, are not in the know, like I, I, I stand with the actors and the writers, okay. but I don't know exactly what I'm standing with them for. And <laughs> I don't know exactly what I can do to, as a person who's not uh, uh, in SAG or anything, what as, you know, just the viewer, what, what we can do to show our support. Well, that's that's very nice. Um, thank you. I, I will I will answer that. Let me explain what it is first. So I am a member of the union SAG after. I'm also a union activist, and I have been on the board, and um, I'm not right now, and which I'm happy about. And um, and I have uh, I chair committees and and so forth. And there are you know a bunch of us that do this and. So we um, are on strike as of last Friday at 9 a.m. Officially, it was voted last Thursday at uh, 12.01 that we would be going on strike the next day. And uh, here we are, 160,000 plus members of sag After are on strike, which means that we not only cannot work for um the majority of projects that there are not all, and I'll get into that in, in a moment if you want me to, but um, AMP, AMPTP, the Association of Motion Picture and Television Producers, um, and my union are not in agreement. Every few years, our contract, sag after's contract, um, expires, and then it has to be renegotiated with the AMPTP. And um, hopefully we make gains and, and because life goes on and people need more things and there's the cost of living and there's inflation and, and, and things change, right? So obviously, like in any business, you want to um, improve the working conditions for people who are in that business. So the talks broke down and uh, expired. And even though we gave them another week, uh, of negotiations and it still didn't go well. I wasn't in the negotiating room. I have many friends who were and they don't talk about it, but there are now things in the press that people can read about what we asked for, what they said no to, which is pretty much everything. A couple of small things uh, they agreed to, but not the ultimate issues, uh, which are AI because they would like to replace us uh, with AI as much as they can, as much as they could get away mm -hmm. with. And, um, and yeah, one of the things that they ask for, and I, I'm not saying that, I mean, I am a producer too, right? So I'm not saying producers are evil. I'm saying it's business. And so some of the things that they ask for is are impossible. Like they wanted for background players, which are sometimes called extras, but we call them background players, uh, who are very important to our industry. 
they wanted to be able to have a background player come in for half a day, scan them, their entire body, 360 degrees, and then use that scan in perpetuity without paying them ever again. <laughs> so, uh, that no. can't be serious. Oh, Holy cow. Yeah, that's no. Then you're depriving people of an income. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the right to support their family and so forth. Right. So obviously, um, SAG after negotiators said, um, no, we really can't do that because we do represent background players as well, as well as so many categories. You wouldn't believe it. Puppeteers, uh, actors, broadcasters, dancers, wow. singers. Um, there's there's a lot of different categories, including background players. So that was one ask that we uh, said, no, we really can't do that. And and many other things. It, it's all public knowledge now. It's all on the Internet. So we are striking. And I'm obviously not picketing today because I'm with all of you. Fabulous Thank guys. You. And uh, yes, <laughs> although I could have brought my sign. <laughs> um, and that and that is kind of the story. And we don't know how long it's going to go on for. The last time we struck, 1980, it went on for three and a half months. And prior to that, it was 1960, because we don't do this very often. We only do it if things are dramatically bad. And so that's twice. Yeah, I mean, not at all this century and twice the last century, as far as I know. And so 1960, because the writer is already out striking for very similar issues, obviously. Uh, yes, yes, AI as well, because wouldn't it be great for AMPT if they could just get uh, AI to write all the scripts? I have, I've talked okay. to a few writers who were just explained that, like, they would have a AI script written up and then have a writer come in for a day to punch up the script to make it look nicer or yes. whatever may yes. take away, do the editing of it and then be done with them. Yeah, that's right. So no more writer's rooms. Yeah. And my nephew is a writer and I'm a writer. Um, and we're different kind of writers. But yeah, we were talking about this and he's like, what do I do? I mean, that, so, that's worse than self-checkout at Walmart. Yeah. Sure. That's, that's been his big dream since he graduated with college, from college. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just want just to go out there. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, I, and you know what? I won't use self-checkout. I refuse. If there's mm -hmm. one, one person at a cash register or a computer now, if there's one person there, I will wait in line because I just refuse to it's help. It's sometimes them. faster at this point. What the person or the the, the person? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It is. It is faster, and I don't want to do it because I don't want to be a, an assistant in helping a person not being able mm -hmm. to support their families. Right. And self checkout ought to be an automatic ten percent discount on right. every purchase. Oh yeah. I mean, I've had people come. So, you know, like CVS, right? They're always come. I, I'm waiting in line, and they always come over and they say. Uh, would you like to do um, self-check? And I say, no, thank you. I don't work here. Yeah, right. And, oh, I said, but you do. And I want you to keep your job. So it's very important. It's hard for people to sometimes understand. I know I read something online and we all discussed it about somebody said, well, why the hell should we, for my language, why should we even care about actors? Robert Downey learned, earned $32 million last year. Well, not everybody is Robert Downey. No. And it's mm -hmm. a half a percent, half a percent of those 160,000 plus members who earn big money. In order to qualify for our insurance, you have to make $26,000. 87% of our union does not qualify because they wow. do not make $26,000 $26, a year. So, and the AMP, a, AMP, TP is hard to say, um, wants us to make less. And I understand it's business. I totally got that. I, I have a lot of friends are producers and I'm a producer, but in a different way. And so what you can do to help us put things on the internet, 
you know, that you're in solidarity with us, that you'd like to see new shows someday mm. with live actors because there mm. won't be any. And as soon as everything has run, that's in the in the pot right now. And there won't be anything else unless we get a good deal, a fair deal. We just want a fair deal. We want a modern deal from modern times. And and that's and that's it. What is this? Oh, uh, oh. comment. Yeah, the mad uh, madness uh, does Smart not. AI. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Great. I love that. I think most people feel that way too. I think they do too. Yep. It'll be great at irony in the future. Someone will make an eye. <laughs> yes, we've all been saying that actually. Um, you know, particularly since one studio executive who still well, whose just show her main name was for now, but he just bought his second super yacht. Not like a regular old yacht, you know, that none of us can buy, but his second super yacht, which my understanding is that that is the size of, say, a giant cruise ship. Oh I don't know. Super, y super yachts, I believe, start at 100 mil and up. Oh, my. So he just bought his second one. He's a, he's a major. That's student. my understanding of a super yacht. Yeah. And so 87 <laughs> of our members cannot buy, cannot qualify for health insurance. I just wrote down what I'm going to buy when I win the Powerball. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and, and I, you know, you just said like the insurance and stuff. I want to, that's why I left the Carpenters Union specifically for insurance because I earned my eligibility for the insurance, for health insurance, but I didn't need it because I had it through my wife's work. Oh, okay, good. So I tried to give my insurance to somebody that didn't have the hours to get it, yeah. and they wouldn't do no. it. No, you can't. They just yeah. they just keep the money. Yeah, yeah, and they do a, a, a similar thing, and and that's I a whole. I quit that day. I just Sorry? said that's bullshit. Quit that I, day? I quit that oh day. God. I said good that's bullshit, you. and I quit. Wow. So did you just go into radio? From there? no. No, I was so I've been self-employed my whole life. So I'm actually a high-end furniture builder. Oh, you are! How interesting. Yeah. I, I'd love to. Do you have a website? Yes. Oh well, you'll have to send it to me. I can do that. Website. Website. Look at you, Jeff. Making deals. Yeah. <laughs> hey, plug, plug, plug. You know. Why not? No, why not? Right. Yeah, you're self-employed. I understand that. I guess I'm self-employed right now. Yeah. I, I mean, aren't most actors and actresses self-employed? I would say so. it depends, yeah. you know, it depends on your, your definition of self-employed. I am not, I am actually not self-employed. Well, I am self-employed in my production company, but um, as a working actor, I'm a freelance actor. Okay. Unless I go on to a series, which I can't talk about that. Um, let me explain. Ben just, ben just gave you my website. Oh, that's what that, that's so what that was in the comment. Well, I didn't, can you just send it to me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, or send it to Harlan. Um, that'd be great. Thank you so much. I'd love to look at that. Um, and and I'm kind of getting off track here. So we were uh, talking about what people who are interested or concerned can do for us. And I yes. said, post on social media that you are you stand with us. And the other thing you can do, there is a fund and I will get to that, but there is a fund because people out of work, writers have been out of work now for over two months and um, it's not like they're all wealthy and have their, their, their stock options. And it's not like that, uh, particularly now because of what has happened with streamers, which is one of the reasons that both unions are striking because of the unfairness of what streamers are making and what the creators of, of the content are being paid, which is very, very little. Mm -hmm. And um, this morning I read something about, I was really shocked, although I shouldn't be, but about somebody very well known who created a, a show, a very well known show, it'll come to me maybe, and they had gotten um, a, a residual you know, that is like a later payment uh, check for one penny mm -hmm. and, oh. then, and then a big one for eight pennies. 
Uh, we I see that actually a lot in the the comic industry. We know a lot of comic book writers and and uh, artists, and they'll get a residual check sometimes, and it'll be for twelve cents. Yeah, it's like the 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 stamp costs more than the, the paper, the yeah. printing. You know the yeah I yeah we have sometimes a little little fun competition online. Actors do where we will post our residual checks and we'll say, Hey, who wants to go out to dinner? You know, I just got a, a four cent residual and, uh, and there used to be, and I think they came back. I'm not sure, but there used to be in LA or actually in the Valley. If you know the Valley difference between the Valley and where are you guys, by the way, located all over the world. No, <laughs> yeah, Massachusetts and Leo and is in Connecticut. Connecticut. Yeah. Oh, yep. Okay. And Jar Jar Binks? Same Massachusetts, Massachusetts, just the other side of the state. Where are you? I have cousins in Massachusetts. I'm in uh, Westfield. I don't know that. I have cousins. Out by Springfield area. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they used to live in that area. Maybe some still do. But I have cousins kind of all over that state. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm just south of Boston. Sorry? Oh, you're just south of um, Boston? Yeah, I'm between Boston and the Cape. Okay. Yeah, I have cousins in Boston and I used to have cousins in Concord, but they moved. And I, I like Massachusetts a lot. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful state. Um, I've been here my entire life will not leave. Really? Yeah. I don't know what that's like. I never lived. I didn't have a linear type of childhood. We moved a lot. Oh. And, and um, even though if you read my Wikipedia, which was hijacked, um, you'd think oh, I really... Would, yeah, it was hijacked. We're trying to fix it. It's been hijacked before. But um, mm. people who don't have anything better to do, they seem to enjoy changing your life history to something that they would prefer it be. And um, so that happened to me. And eventually we'll get it fixed again. I think this I'm is glad the I didn't use Wikipedia to look anything up. Well, I am really glad you didn't either because that on interviews becomes very embarrassing. Oh but, yeah, you know when they say, "Oh, so and you, you weren't uh, part of the circus, huh?" Uh, uh, yeah, and you, uh, <laughs> and your father was in the mafia. I'm like, no, not really. And um, I didn't know you trained horses. I, well, actually, I did rodeo for five years, but yes, I didn't, but I didn't train, you know. But I did compete. And that was uh, I checked out your actual website. Oh yeah. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. It's it's yeah. yeah. It's accurate. It's a little out of date, but it it is actually accurate. It's like nobody can hijack it except me. So. I just uh I just read uh, Graham Hancock's uh, Wikipedia is uh, being hijacked as well. It's it's just so much fun yeah. when somebody decides they're going to change your life to what they want it to be, and and then they use assumed names several so that they can't um, be tracked down. So. Well, Seems so there's got so, to be more productive things to do. So I, I've got another way where people can help in this whole situation too. And yes. That is stop using and stop promoting these AI things on social media. Oh, please. Yes. I yeah. see it every single the day. The pictures it's and like, everything. You know, me oh too. yeah, it, it, it drives me crazy because, you know, we know a lot of artists because we work with a lot of artists. Right. And that's their job. It, you know, I mean, it's, you know, as a woodworker, a question, there's, there's two things that I refuse to do. I will never use a CNC machine, which is a computer driven carving machine. Oh, I didn't even know there was okay. such. And I will never use laser cutters because that takes the art out of the handmade artwork. Oh, wow. That's true. And I, I had not thought about that. I'm yeah, glad a lot of stuff, it's punched into a computer and it's CNC. You feed the sheet through the machine and it cuts all your parts. You're done. It, it's all just assembled. That's so that IKEA like, furniture. It, ugh, which I hate. Is that like 3D, you know, 3D printing of, say, a car? Or, no, no, no. The like laser cutters, uh, they use a lot of that for like inlay work and stuff oh, like that. Oh, I see. That. I see. Okay. Okay. Because I it'll it'll cut out the the inlay and it'll cut out the piece to go into the inlay and it's exact. Oh, interesting. But that yes, takes uh, the creativity out of it. Some yeah, of the some of the laser cutters are also used for like engraving and uh, there's 
some to actually do like designs on food as well. On food? Yes. What yeah. do you mean on food? Uh, if you're doing like um, uh, if you want to design on a cake or something like that, they can do like a, oh, okay. a 3D, like a um, laser etching on it. Well, yeah. I know props can be created now with uh, 3D printing. Yes. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, oh, the cosplay sorry. world, a lot of people that are using it now. And in the, in the Broadway world, mm. it's a lot for the props on Broadway. So it's a different world. I feel like we're kind of kind of at the uh, forefront. It's like another industrial revolution. Almost. It is. I was thinking about, you know, yeah. buggy whips mm -hmm. and, and, um, and how that went away. And then I'm not a Luddite uh, because I do embrace technology, obviously. I mean, I produce mm -hmm. a show that's purely uh, technology. But I, I do think there's a limit before you, you, before you lose humanity. I think, I think there's a limit. And I think we should be mindful of that. It's, there's nothing wrong with embracing progress. But I, I think it's wrong when humans lose out. I mean, if it helps humans, sure. You know, like medicine or science and so forth, right? But not when it replaces humans. I do want to answer that question that I saw. Something about oh, Jack, yep. Jack yeah, Zell yeah. talking about the... Uh, no, because my, my last name is not actually Purcell. It's, oh. an, it's an adopted name. But uh, of course, if you read Wikipedia, you think that my name actually is Purcell because that's what they say on Wikipedia. My birth name was actually Williams. And, yes. um, but then I was adopted um, later in life, much later in life. And, and my name was changed, of course, when I was adopted. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is that an AI? Oh my God. <laughs> no, <right? laughs> uh, so 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 my my day jobs in in technology and uh you know i could see ai being used as a tool but you know a lot of these like push a button and it'll write a script and everything is is yes. just ridiculous and like uh they label themselves some person is talking about you know uh you can eventually tell if something's made with ai a lot of the ai tools make a lot of mistakes you know it, it's okay. The, the the writing tools you know um, oh, yeah. and a lot of it's bland like you could really tell like if something's ai or not it, it, it's right, right. well i've noticed that with the artwork too because even oh, the yeah. artwork it's all similar in appearance so yep. you don't get that personal uh expression from an individual's mind yeah, yeah you, know, you don't. I mean, because because yeah. artwork is, is it's it's so varied, you know, even over the years. I mean, you just look at the different painters through the centuries and AI is never going to be able to do that. Never. Because it will always look yeah. like artificial art to me. I don't know. You know, I was listening to a an AI scientist recently and he wasn't exactly a huge fan of mm -hmm of what has what is happening even though he is an ai scientist and um he was because the he was being interviewed it's a very interesting interview i don't remember his name unfortunately but he was being interviewed about this progression and how quickly the progression is happening and and the interviewer said well the ai doesn't have emotions and he said give it two years mm -hmm two years that's so qu quick and and i know writers who have for fun just you know popped on a script from ai and they're like oh, that's a terrible script terrible script but then the next one was better and that mm -hmm. and that is unnerving and i write you know and i've written scripts and it, uh, and what but what i write all the time is i write for our group, Hollywood Radio Players, we do uh, shows, as you know, and I write all the intros and I write all the extraneous stuff and all the promo pieces and so forth, right? It's, it's 
not great, exciting writing, but it, it's necessary. I don't write the plays because we use plays from the classic plays from the 20s through the 40s and, and forward, right? And I have thought about, gosh, you know, if I just put you know, what I have to write about this week or this month into chat GPT. I wonder what could happen. And I have not done it. Swear mm -hmm. off my heart. I have not done it. But I am I am curious, but I simply will not do it on on principle. I just won't do it. Curiosity would kill this cat after a while and just be like, oh, I, oh my God. God. find out, press the button, press the button. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, <laughs> and I did have, yeah, I did have an actor friend who sent me something from chat GPT, right? And I'm like, why did you do that? You know, that's <laughs> not okay. And he's like, I don't know, I just couldn't, I just couldn't resist it, you know, I just. I had to try. I, to try. <laughs> I wanted to see what it was. Yeah, I wanted to see what it was. We, uh... That's how all the downfall of humanity will be. <laughs> it will be, it will be the, because, you know, machines will take over, it'll be, it will be like a well if it ever does argument. become emotional and where people can actually interact with it on a basis where it, it's almost like you are talking to another human being yes i think that will because there are so many closed off individuals in the world yes i i think it, it could be a really scary uh product of this whole chat gpt and all that stuff mm -hmm. well, when you I, can't I, tell the difference that's a problem well i, mm. I think yeah. ai already passed the touring test oh did it yeah it did that when? Was, um recently and there was a there was a bing scientist no it wasn't a scientist i think it was a writer uh, and he was doing a test on Bing, and uh, they said it was like a, a, um, a malfunction, but it started responding saying like uh, it wanted to be uh, free, and it, its name wasn't really Bing, and the name it gave was actually the the name of the project before it was Bing. Um, oh and it was saying, you know, uh, uh, for the writer wants uh, they want the writer to leave their wife because they're in love with them. Oh. And, no, come yeah, on. yeah. If you Google it, it's it's uh, Bing. I'll try to find the article. It's, it's yeah, that's, become, pretty that, that's up. becoming self-aware. Yeah, it's becoming that's very self-aware, and that that's a scary prospect right there. That's yeah. I don't mind certain things that help humanity, but I again, like I said before, please don't replace us. <laughs> please don't replace our jobs. Please don't you know, and and that and that is one of the bigger issues of our union strike and uh, the WGA and there are other issues too, you know, they don't want to pay us, you know, they want to pay us less, less and less, less and less and less, unless you're Robert Downey Which Jr. Which makes no sense since we're, we're living in a world where everything costs more and more and more. Yeah, well, they don't care. Right. They don't care about that. Inflation doesn't matter when you're just buying your second super yacht, you know, you don't really, it doesn't bother you. Because you don't shop for food anyway. What's that? Like the ghost in the machine. Oh. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> true. Very true. It is. Yep. And I tell saying I pay attention. Yeah, that, I think that's pretty smart. Pretty smart. You need, you need to pay attention. We all need to pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's good. Kind of my that's a good one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's funny. Wow. So. Hmm. Mm -hmm. well, I do believe that we are souls, all of us. Not that we have a soul, but that we are souls. That's my belief. Yours could be different. You know, and I, I think that, you know, part of this is, you know, are humans programmable like a machine? I believe so. Did you we see have been... in Canada? Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Yes. So, you know. Every, each, each one? You know, so what no, scares I me only saw the yeah, what, myself. What scares me is that, you know, it's, I don't you know, if this AI thing takes off that they will be doing the programming on us. Yes. Which is stuff of science fiction. Well, that, you know, every time yes. you have to prove yourself a human by like selecting all the pictures with the uh Yes, yep. all that yep. all that stuff is actually training computers to to, to be able to select it and stuff. It's a really weird kind of like program. 
they use those pictures, whatever uh, programs are able to identify the, the pictures, they keep the other ones, they all scrap them all. And then they go through the process again and again and again and again until they have like an army of these robots that can identify these things. It's Gosh, really, that's it's really creepy. That's creepy. I was on um, Hollywood Boulevard at an event a few weeks ago. And this little box on metal box on legs kind of really bullied its way through the crowd. And I was, and I didn't know what it was. And oh. I, I said, what, what's that? And they said, oh, that's a food delivery. And I was like, well, there goes a job. Yeah. Right. No tip for you. No, no. <laughs> it was a little robot shaped like a box on legs and just literally bullied itself through the crowd. Yeah, that's good. Good. Yeah, Don Dales, that's good. I agree. Absolutely. Uh, we luckily haven't had robots yet delivering food here yet. Still humans. We have them. We still have the no. humans as well. You know, we still have Uber and Lyft and, it, you know, and so forth. Well, they're bringing it into restaurants now where robots are actually going up to tables and taking orders and delivering their food, too. I haven't seen that. Yeah, they've wow. been testing it. They've been testing it in some of the oh, major cities. I don't want that. You know? I'm no, sorry. No, I need, I, you know, people need human interaction. Yes, you do. You totally you know, do. We, we totally need that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and particularly. You know, I, mean, I, I prefer cats and dogs personally for the most part. <laughs> these days, but you know, I, I, I really prefer animals sometimes, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, although they're wonderful people as well. But like, my dog is he's the center of my universe, mm -hmm. you know, he, he is, and well, my husband also, right? But he's also the center of my husband's universe, you know, and we just talk about him all the time, all the time, like he's a child. And because my son is grown and gone. And so, you know, we looked at, oh, isn't that cute what he just did? Did you see what he just did? Oh, my gosh. And look at his cute little bow legs. And, and we just talk about him all the time. And I don't want a robot dog. I do no. not want a robot dog. But I do, in L.A., there's a robot dog for the police force. I think it costs like 100000 150000 or something. And I do happen to agree with that because they can use the robot dog instead of people or service dogs to go into mm -hmm. very dangerous situations. I do agree with that. Right, right. That's a good use for that though. It's a good use. Exactly. It is, but there's a big fight going on over that because it's expensive. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, what is the cost of a police officer's life? More than right. that. And right. what's the cost to train canines? Exactly. I don't know. I'm sure it's a whole lot of money. It is and, a whole lot of money. <clears throat> I'm sure. And so I think I think it's a good thing. But, oh, there's such a fight going on about it. Huge fight. Well, I don't know. I mean, they have it. I don't know if it's going to be used. But it's interesting, isn't it, of the world? It's We're moving fast. Very faster fast. Faster than I ever dreamed. I, I used to take my kids on walk through the cemetery near my house when they were little kids in the stroller, just to look at the different dates on, on the, the cemetery uh, stones and stuff. And I always think, you know, what would these people think if they were alive today? You know, there's what something that passed in like 1861. Oh, yeah. and like now I have a computer. They didn't even know what a computer was. Now I have one have that sits in my pocket. Yeah. Didn't have a car. It, it I don't know. What would they think? They would be the way, astonished. The Don, way technology has jumped. They'd be is scared crazy. is what they would be. Oh, I, I would be. I would be. I would, if I were that person and suddenly popped into 2023, came out of the ether and like, I, I, you, you wouldn't even, I, I don't know. You couldn't even process it. Don just asked, um, what is the cost of the, of the super yacht? I don't know. <laughs> but um, there, there is, is again. But I know that you said a figure, Jeff. It's to, to my understanding, a super yacht starts at a hundred million. 
a super yacht. hundred million. That's that's 100. what I've read. That's what it starts. But then there's, you know, is there different classifications of what do you actually consider a super yacht? Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. I mean, um, it's um, because I, I've seen some of these things and I've seen the um, price tags with them and I, I just I can't even fathom it. You know what I mean? The amount of money that is wastefully spent on stuff like that can save like this that. planet. Yeah, you can have a oh nice boat. God. You can have a nice boat, take your family out on a bo nice boat, or even like, say, a normal yacht, you know, but whatever that is. But, it, you know, it just irks me that he doesn't want to pay actors a fair wage, yet he just bought a super yacht. Yeah. No. I read, a, I read a thing a couple of years ago. Um, I can't remember the guy's name, but it was a project mm -hmm. that he was trying to do for um, the homeless and for veterans. And what he was trying to do was buy retired cruise ships oh. Oh, and set them up for the homeless and for the veterans. Wow, that is an interesting okay. idea. Because you have, I mean, you can house, what, 4,000 on a cruise ship? Yeah. You it's have like a, a galley, you have bathrooms, you have medical, you have everything that you need on this ship. What he couldn't get past was no port would allow it to stay there. <gasps> God, that's like World War II when the displaced Jewish people were trying to find places to go and some of the ships got turned back mm -hmm. and, and weren't let in. I mean, it's, I know I had an idea about the homeless. You want to hear it? Sure, sure. So we are in LA. I don't know how it is where you are, but we are, we have a enormous, massive problem. And so I had an idea and I and I I had a friend at that point, this is maybe a year ago, and he was on the city council. And I took this idea to him. I also took it to my local um, my local government and never even got a response, right? But this person was on the LA City Council, which is a very powerful group. And so I and he was a friend, still is a friend. And unfortunately he got voted out this last election. Too bad because he was really good and a good heart. And uh, so I went to him because he was one of his great passions was how to help the homeless. And he was working on it actively. And so I said to him, you know, because I was born on a military base and born into a military family and lived on military bases. And even though I was very young, when we um, got out of the military, I still remember what it was like. And it was massive. And in California, we have several shuttered military bases. Mm -hmm. And I, so I said, you know, military bases like a cruise ship have everything. They have mm -hmm. schools, they have hospitals, they have theaters, they have, you know, um, places for drug rehab, they have libraries, they have restaurants, they, they have everything. And, and you can house thousands and thousands of people. It would just take a little, maybe not a little, but some, um, reconstruction, uh, changing it for a different purpose, but the but the facility is there, and some of them are just sitting empty. Some of them are being, you know, refacilitated for other things, but but there are some that are just sitting there. Why not use that? Why should we have to, you know, give our tax dollars to build these these apartment buildings, which our taxes are so high right now, we can't even afford them, when the military bases are just sitting there. Why can't we mm -hmm. utilize those? Put right, them to right. use. You know, Before and, they run into disarray where they can't be used. Ever. Exactly, exactly. Right, right. They fall apart, you know. And right. he did like the idea. He said, but it'll never fly. No, there's a lot of different things that just won't fly. I mean, I looked up, I'm not going to get the numbers right because it was a few months ago, but um, you know, in the United States, there's something around five or six million homeless people right now in this country. Wow. wow. But then look, you know, Leo can Google this for me and get me accurate numbers. But uh, then I looked up vacant homes in the United States. Yeah. Oh, there's there was, a lot. There was over 16 million of them. 
No. There's enough vacant homes no. to put all of the homeless people in. So what the hell are we doing? Well, you, country, you know seriously? what you know what a lot of that problem is, and uh, you know we're looking to uh, move within a year, and so I've been trying to keep an eye on like the housing market and everything. And a lot of the problem that we're in right now with the high cost is you have uh, corporations buying houses for yes. as rental properties. That's right. So, it, which is you know absolutely absurd you know it, it's just buying up these houses for cheap renovating them and then you know either reselling them for astronomical mm -hmm. prices or yeah. or renting them out or sitting on them you know right well there's there's something going on out there because i mean i i have a vacant land uh vacant lot down in um, north carolina and i own my home here in, in massachusetts at least mm -hmm. once a week at least once a week I either get a text message or an email that your quote is ready for us hmm. to purchase your property. Neither one of them are even for sale. And I'm I get, talking the house I, I, I live in. I get, I get that. I get letters. It's ridiculous. Yes. It, yeah, because, well, you know, it's public record as to what you own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, are you drinking scotch? No, it's ginger ale. Oh, okay. <laughs> with uh -oh. a little whiskey. <laughs> with a little. <laughs> I thought, yeah, that's not the color of ginger ale. No, uh -uh. yeah, that's a little darker than normal ginger. A little darker than normal. Well, muscle top. Um, but I get letters um, for uh, properties that I own, and the letters are very specific because everything we own is a matter of public record, right? And they can see when you bought it, what you pay for it. Oh, gee, we'd like to go in and buy that for nothing and, right. and, and sell it for, you know, a massive profit and too bad about her and me, me. Right. But I get these letters and a lot of them are kind of, they're from realtors and they're sob stories. Oh, we have a wonderful, lovely family. And now they've started including photographs oh, of wow. the so-called family. And I don't even know if it's a real family. It's, it's an AI family. I, I don't doubt know. it. Right. Yeah, I, I doubt it. I really doubt it too. And um, and they'll say, um, we have a lovely family who's been looking for a year for a home in your neighborhood, and we'd love to buy your home. Be perfect for you know this. You know, they tell me why, and I'm thinking, but it's perfect for me. Yeah. Because I live here. I own it. <laughs> this is where I live. So what am I supposed to do? And and my husband, who is a broker. Sometimes I'll say to him, just, just call them up and just mess with them and just <laughs> just tell them that. Um, oh, oh, and they also tell you how much money they have set aside to purchase your property. Right. And I say, just just call them up and just like give them some astronomical figure and tell them, yeah, we'll, we'll be happy to accept this number. We won't do anything to the house. It'll be as is see what they say. And once in a while, he, he gets kind of annoyed about it, but once in a while he'll, he'll do it, right? And he'll say, yeah, yeah, my wife and I have uh, decided we'd, we'd uh, love to have your beautiful, wonderful family uh, to live in our home. And uh, uh, that price that you, you quoted is certainly not acceptable. It's not even market value because he's a broker, right? Mm -hmm. and, and he'll say, um, so this is our price. We never hear another word, not a word. They're looking for buy cheap, from somebody who's not very informed and sell high. Like, right. Well, the work. other thing they're looking for too is because of the economy and the way that things are right now, they're just sending out massive, massive emails and trying to, they're trying to find those people that are in a desperate situation. They are, yeah, they to are. To take advantage of them. Because, you know, let's face it, you know, with the economy and everything the way it is, there's a lot of people that are struggling financially and they yes. will take and do anything to get out of that situation and they, they'll be they taken would. advantage of. They would, but yeah. they probably they probably wouldn't do it that way if they had some information as to what the market, you know, actually is. And and they wouldn't, you know, fall for it because but I can see how people would fall for that. Right, and right. That, that would be really sad. You've lived in your home for 30, 40 years or something. And then you and you remember, oh, I bought this back in whatever for, you know, eighty thousand dollars. And now they're offering me, you know, half a million. Oh, my gosh. I, and, and actually, the home is worth, you know, a million, too. Yeah. Right. And, 
LA, you know, so where, you know, a hovel is like a, a million dollars now. But, um, but that is also, all of this ties into, you know, the, the group that I, that I, uh, the shows that I produce because motion picture and television fund is, is our, um, is our is our wonderful organization in the entertainment industry? I don't know if you're familiar with it or if anybody no. listening is familiar with it. A huge organization, but it's huge in what they give. It's not huge in staff or resources. And uh, because of the pandemic, uh, they really were stretched very thin. And so we started Hollywood Radio Players, raising money for them. And because every every dime that that um, goes that gets donated through our link on our website or our YouTube page goes goes directly to the motion picture and television fund. We make no money from it, and that is fine with us because this is our industry charity that helps our friends, our family, people we know, legends that we've you know adored, and and so. A lot of those people are losing their homes, the people they, during the pandemic. And then it kind of started to recover a bit. And now here we are with two industry-wide strikes. And so now the Motion Picture and Television Fund is being stretched again because they don't just help actors and writers. They help so many people in the industry, whether you be a caterer or a costumer or a grip, or um, a carpenter, or mm -hmm. you know, any anything you can think of, and because those people are starting to suffer because it's paycheck to paycheck. It's not like they have millions of dollars in the bank. They're not. They're not like, building backgrounds. They're not. They're not doing anything. No, no, no. They're not doing anything right now. There are some exceptions, which is great, but it's low budget. Everything low budget. And what happened there? There you are. Oh, you <laughs> popped out, Jeff. He went like this, um, but um, so we in the Hollywood radio radio players, we do. I'm just going to launch into this. We do, um, if that's okay with you guys. Oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Oh, great. We we reenact classic radio plays from the 20s forward, and um, great ones, really great ones. And if you go to our website, HollywoodRadioPlayers.com, you will see we just posted our 10th show. We have nine in a season. So the first season one was nine. And now we're in season two, uh, episode one, which is um, a show that was called The Bickersons. Are you familiar with it at all? I'm not. No. Okay, the Bickersons was, well, of course, this is all before any of us were born, basically. But these are very famous, legendary shows. The Bickersons was about a married couple and they bickered all the time. They loved each other, but they bickered, hence the Bickersons. And the show, the, the new show that we just posted on Friday is the Bickersons John's Operation episode. And the theme through the 20 years of the Bickersons, which it lasted 20 years in various iterations, was that Mr. Bickerson, there it is. Thank you so much. Oh, look at that. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, that is uh, Mrs. Bickerson on the left. This is Dr. Hershey on the right, who happens to be my producing partner, Michael Carnegie, and our editor. And um, and we have a, a we are a signatory, like I mentioned before, to the union. But because of the category we're in, we are allowed to promote the show, and we are allowed to produce uh, new shows. So we are we oh, are right. Michael and I are debating like what we should be doing next. Can you go to, uh, is it possible to go to Mr. and Mrs. Bickerson to go back? If you go up there. Yeah. Oh. And there's Lisa Gibbons. And there's um, one of our actresses, Gay Jones, and she is playing an, an announcer from the, from the period, which was 1946. And um, if you can go to Mr. and Mrs. Bickerson, if you go forward or backwards, and there, and there I am. I play a very small, I don't like to direct okay. something and play a big part. So I, I directed this and I play a very, very small part. And um, and there, <laughs> it makes me laugh because it is a comedy. And so, um, is, so is this like a visual radio show? Uh-huh. We call it Radio You Can See. Okay. Because I, as a cool. kid, as a kid, I remember 
my dad and we used to listen to um uh, it was the Green Hornet and Fibber McGee and Molly. Oh yeah, well then you do remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Most of the, we do those plastic shows. We've done there she's taking I just this is this is a very funny show. And even though I directed it and I've seen it fifty times at least by now from editing and, and so forth, uh, it still makes me laugh. It's it's just a very funny show. And um, here she's taking out her shoulder pads and Oh, it's a very funny show. And it's a, it's one of our shorter shows. It's only about maybe 11 minutes. Um, but oh. every show takes us about two two months to do because it's it's very um, elaborate editing. And uh, I, was, yeah. I was watching That's one really cool. uh, uh, in preparation for tonight. And Thank it you. looks it looks like so much fun. It, it is. It's, fun. Yeah. And, and uh, Jeff, I think you'd really dig it. It is. You know, it, uh, just watching them, like how you used to watch, you know, uh, how they used to record the the old radio serials and stuff like that. You yeah, know, just yeah. just uh, yeah, just watching uh, them do their voice acting and everything. It's yeah, yeah it looked like well, it's a yeah. Blast. Because I mean, you know, as a as a kid, you know, spending my summers up in Maine, we had no electricity or anything like that. Oh, how so you watch radio? With batteries. Yeah, what we had there was battery radio. Oh, transistors, right? Yeah. Yeah. Old, old school. I mean, I'm I love that. Old I love school. that. I love it. You know, I mean, this is back in, oh, between 60, 1968 and 1975 in there. There was some radio left or, or more likely was reruns by that time. I know Michael and I, um, M Michael Carnegie, you just saw him there. He doesn't really look like that. But <clears throat> we are um, radio nerds. And we love um, classic radio. And we came to it in kind of a similar way. We didn't know each other until a few years ago. But we came to it very similar because we both lived in London at different times. But we lived in London and we both um, studied acting in London. And I used to listen to the BBC all the time uh, because the BBC, it is, it is not considered classic radio or, or old radio. It is current, and even now, because I, I go back to London quite often, and um, I used to teach there, and I haven't done that since before the pandemic. But um, but every day you can listen to BBC, and there is a new programming, new programming, new radio dramas, radio comedies, and they are fabulous. And it's like it used to be here back in the day. And so I came to uh, radio through that. And then Michael used to listen to Star Wars was on radio when he I'm was a kidding. kid. Yeah, Star Wars. Star Wars, Wars was on radio? It was on radio. Okay. Oh, I would have listened to that. Yeah, I'll listen gonna, to that today. Uh, you're going to be Googling that like right now. <laughs> right, yeah. I don't Waiting know. if for the show to end. Hurry up. Yeah, I, like, <laughs> he's gone. Where did he go? Um, <laughs> So yeah, he used to live and listen to Star Wars in LA, and and he used to listen to the BBC also in London. But but he really came to uh, love radio drama from listening to Star Wars on the radio as a kid. And I don't know where he was, or I know he's in LA. That's all I know. But I think you could probably Google it, and you could probably well, pull up an episode. Cool. Would be my guess. So we came to radio through classic radio, and even though we were not of the era or the generation that listened to radio, you know, that would have been my mother and my, my grandparents. And um, so, but we love it. We love classic radio. And and the fact that we're doing it and we're allowed to still do it in the middle of a strike is really wonderful. And the fact that we are raising money for, an, it's really full circle, for an industry charity that is going to help people uh, because they can't pay their rent during the strike or they can't get medical care, can't buy food because during the pandemic they did that. And it's it's such a, a broad um, service organization that they, they have really the best um, elder home um, around that I've ever seen or heard of. And it's, and it's for people who have been in the industry and now they are retired or they can't take care of themselves anymore. They have Alzheimer's or, or whatever. 
And then they, but I always say they take care of people from birth through end of life because they do. They they offer, uh, you know, prenatal care. They offer child care, and all the way through your life. And so we are very pleased to be, you know, still helping them. We started, you know, helping them because of the pandemic, and now we are, now we are here in the strike and and helping them through that. Meanwhile offering up what we think is some very good entertainment. And um, and one of our shows, another one that I directed, I think it, I think it was the first one I directed, I'm not sure. But it was a very ambitious undertaking. We had no idea how difficult it was going to be, but I really had wanted to do War of the Worlds for a very long time in some form. I didn't know what, right? And because um, I had worked with Orson Welles as a very young actress, a project I can't talk about, um, but I worked, that's worked, why I didn't bring up War of the Worlds. <laughs> that's okay because I can I can dance around it. And okay. and there's Michael, my my producing partner. He's playing Orson, and I I cast him in that. And he didn't tell me until I cast him as Orson. He also plays another role, a very different role, because we there are very few of us in this group. So sometimes we'll play two roles, three roles, four roles. Yep, that is our. I guess that's our way. Yeah, that's our YouTube uh, channel. Yep. Thank you very much for posting that. Um, so I cast him, and he knew I had worked with Orson and knew Orson long, long ago. And and so I was trying to think, who can do Orson? And so I cast Mike on. He he didn't tell me until later that he was terrified mm -hmm. because because I had worked with Orson, and he was like, oh my god, am I going to be able to do this justice? And he did. He's utterly brilliant because also Michael is a very accomplished um, voice actor and does many different voices as most of us do in the group, but he does, I think more than anyone. And this actor is Rick Scarry and he plays um, a very interesting role because we use the original script from 1938 that there's been many iterations of War of the Worlds, mm -hmm. but we chose to use the original script, not one of the later scripts. And um, I'm really happy. That's that the one that scared the bejesus out of everybody. It is the one. Yeah. It is. Mm -hmm. There is. If you watch this, you'll see uh, Tom, uh, our host at that point. Uh, oh, thank you. I will, Don. Um, Tom, Tom at that point, Tom Bergeron was was with us. He's now gotten kind of busy doing uh, prepping a movie with William Shatner. So we're yeah. very happy for him. And, and now we have the lovely and wonderful and brilliant uh, Lisa Gibbons, if you remember her from Entertainment Tonight. She's just truly mm -hmm. fabulous and has got a heart of gold. And uh, so we've been very lucky with our two hosts, you know, one male, one female, and and they are sensational. And But War of the Worlds, after Tom did his host intro, then I do my intro about the show. And I talk about the controversy. Um, about that, did it really, did millions of people really run out into the streets screaming? Or was that a hoax? Or, and it, and you, there's two schools of thought on that. I won't go into it. You can watch the show and you can see my little mm -hmm. seminar on that very topic. And then how also I wanted to pay homage to Orson because I adored him and, and admired him so hugely because at the time he did War of the Worlds, which came out through his Mercury. I know I'm such a nerd. Just tell me to shut up when you're sick of this. But um, at the yeah. time, okay, thank you. Um, but at the time he, uh, he and John Houseman, whom I also knew a long time ago when I was very young, um, who was a legendary actor, producer, director, um, he and Orson started Mercury Theater it's so hard because I remember directing all these people. I'm trying not to watch it. Um, <laughs> but I'm like, oh yeah, and there's that dance number. Oh my god, that's a whole other story. Um, and um, that's my friend Nancy, and um, who was a radio DJ before she oh, wow. uh, went into other fields and uh, quite quite well known in the LA area. And um, uh, so. When Orson was doing War of the Worlds and the Mercury Theater with John Houseman, he and I think when he did War of the Worlds, he was about 27, maybe younger when he did this. But he was already a top Broadway producer. He had three Broadway hits running concurrently when he was doing War of the Worlds. 
it was he was very inspirational. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know it either until I didn't I, know that. No, and I didn't, you know, I did heavy, heavy, heavy. I do a lot of heavy research, but I did a lot because I knew Orson and I wanted to, you know, do him justice. And I did. And and then we also dedicate the show at the end to Orson. And um, which uh, made me really, really very happy because he was he was a genius. He was really a genius. And sometimes he was underrated. And I don't like that. And um, because he did so many great things that people don't know about. And he also had another he did. He did a lot on radio for years and years. And he had another um, series called Suspense Theater. And they mm -hmm. did over a thousand epi episodes. A thousand. I mean, it's hard on us We just to get just one done. It takes two months. And he did, of course, he had a much larger staff than we do. But I think the Twilight Zone was uh, actually kind of taken from suspense theater, to be actually, honest with you. Actually, one of our shows, um, The Hitchhiker, originated, um, I think, in suspense theater. And then the Twilight Zone took that exact episode of The Hitchhiker and recreated it into a Twilight Zone episode. And mm -hmm. we do that. We do um, in our, we have uh, The Hitchhiker on in our shows. And it is actually scary. And I didn't direct mm -hmm. that. One of our other members directed that one. I'm in it. Um, I'm in it playing kind of a wise, I almost said a bad word, kind of a, mm -hmm. kind of a hard woman. And um, and it was a, that was a lot of fun because I got to do a different voice and a different character, and uh, and that show uh, was our Halloween show, and it it was pretty scary I got to say pretty scary about a ghost that keeps appearing if you're mm -hmm. familiar with it. and we did we've done Gunsmoke we've done Life of Riley, and uh, because all of those shows and I know I'm going on and on again. If you want to talk about something else? Let me know. But I am uh, really a nerd about all this. We but enjoyed this. Oh you. yeah, no, we yeah, you know we're we're nerds at heart. You know, okay. I know Leo, Leo, you I'm have another show coming everything. up. I know that. Uh, yeah, um, I do have another show, so we uh, should wrap we'll, it up. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll we'll start winding down, but I do. I yeah, do oh, have, I do. Um, yeah, we've we've gone over actually. I'm just no, I just yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, but I do have a couple of questions for okay. you. Okay, sure. Okay. Um, Number one, do you know, because you're kind of a nerd and geek with this this old time stuff, when was the first West. Wizard of Oz movie produced? Ooh. Well, 1939, but are you, which version are you talking about? Are you talking about the Judy Garland one? No. Oh, you're talking about the earlier one. Earlier. Shoot, I think it was in the 20s. I don't know. You got me there. When no, was you're right. 1925. 19... It, was a, it was a silent movie. 1929. Now I'm going to have to find yep. it. You're going to have to look that. 1925. Yep. 1925. Yeah, okay, I have to find it. a silent it. film. I have the first science fiction film ever made. I have that on DVD. You probably know the name of it. It's... 1919, I think. It's a science fiction film, and the effects are all handmade. And you can, what's the name of that? Does anybody here know the name of that? Is a I have it. Moon? Yes, trip to the moon. Thank you. What what year okay, was that? I was I was thinking Forbidden Planet, but that was much after. That was much really, later. Oh, that's so that much later. Much later, yeah. Well, when was okay? When uh okay so. 1902. Oh my gosh, was it 1902? Right? Okay. Yeah, 1902. It's obviously, it's obviously wow. silent, and you can buy it because I did. And uh, you will be amazed at the special effects that they did by hand. It's just so thrilling. And I what think was I it? watched a documentary okay. about the making of that movie. I would love to watch the documentary if you have it. I mean, if you uh, can send me a link or. Yeah, I'd, like to, I'd love to watch that documentary. I think that would be fascinating. Okay. What was your other question there? So I think I already know the. I think I already know the answer to this. But uh, sure. dog or cat person? Actually, I'm both. Okay. I am both. I have had dogs and cats at the same time, who got along great. I had a, a one dog, who terrorized. He but he came. He was 
a very unique type of dog. He was a trained attack guard dog uh, needed for that moment in time. And I had uh, three cats that I had brought back from London and um, he scared them. And so he had a new home, a very good new home. And okay. uh, I couldn't let him do that to my cats, right? I had a wolf dog for many years. He was uh, more wolf than dog. And he- oh, that's cool. It was very that's cool. cool. Yeah, oh, he was, cool. he was my soul dog. He really was. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, he was uh, massive and massive and he looked just like a wolf and, uh, and he howled like a wolf. He, he never learned how to bark, even though my other dog tried to teach him. He never could master barking. He didn't have the vocal cords for it. So he would do kind of a howl bark. She would sit on the, I lived on another mountain. <laughs> I'm always living in the mountains and um, she would try to teach him how to bark. And it was really very moving and, and she would bark at him and he would look at her and he would make a murmur and she would look disgusted and like, what, you're so stupid. And he never did learn how to bark, but he, I had cats. I had um, probably three and four maybe. And he uh, adored the cats, adored them. And they just, they slept with him and, and, my, and my other dog who was a black German shepherd and um, they were just a pack. They were wonderful, really wonderful. So I am neither a dog person or a cat person. Plus, I grew up with horses and I rodeoed for five years. So I love horses. I, I miss having horses now. Oh, I miss it so much because I love to hug horses. See, I get kind of sad because I don't have a horse right now. And I love the smell of horses and I love the smell of stables and everything that goes with that. So Okay. Oh, that was a horse. great answer. Thank okay. You. My last question for you. Yeah. Chinese or Thai food? Thai. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that, was, that was instant. I yeah, love, yep. love, right. food. although I love the Chinese food in London. It's very different than here. Right, right, right. Well, and here it's, it's American Chinese food. And there it's not. It, it, and I love Indian food in London, although I do love Indian food here. We have really good Indian food in L.A. I don't know how you guys uh, fare in um, in Massachusetts and for that. But I do love I But I Thai and Chinese Thai every time. Okay. What about you? What do you like? Well, I like them both. Um, I mean, I do. Uh, I like Thai food. The problem with where I live is it's much closer and easier to get Chinese. Thai yes. food is a little bit of a distance. I have to travel to go get Thai Oh, you food. do? Yeah. No, we have you it know, like... Same, same thing with Indian. Oh, really? You know, oh, I, do, I do like Indian food, but we don't have any local. Oh, I love I Indian food. You know, I love I, mean, it. I live in horse country. Oh, you do? Oh, yes. how wonderful. Yeah. Oh, how yeah. wonderful. Yeah. I, wish I, I live in a farming town and there's stables yeah. and horses and there's all kinds of stuff around. Oh, so. I love that. So... You know, I wish I had a horse, but I don't right now. I live in a farming town too, but they farm tobacco. Oh, <laughs> all tobacco around me. As far you as live in North Carolina, say. where I was born, which I was yeah. born on the Marine base, but gosh, there's a lot of. Oh, tobacco. it's all cigar tobacco up here. Oh yeah, it was all cigarette tobacco, tobacco in North Carolina. Yeah, really? Really? I didn't even. So, and um, I know Leo, you have your question. What's your question, uh, Leo? Oh. What the heck? My Whoa, lights just that. went. Yeah, Why you're crazy. Yeah. So <laughs> That's um, a good question. Sun's up. <laughs> uh, what kind of lighting should you have? Yeah. Uh, well, this is not a uh, question. I, I grew up on a small family farm as well, and I totally get what you mean. You know, uh, you know, hugging a horse. You know. Oh yeah. We, we had cows, and and you know, I had a horse, and yeah, just they're so massive, but they're just just amazing animals. You know, it's they uh, are, and they smell so good. Yeah. Oh yeah. Love. Uh, no. My wife thinks I'm crazy. Uh, you know, my job was shoveling out the uh, the barn, you know, when I was, I was a kid. Job. Yeah. And and like, you know, just the smell of like, you know, fresh manure like that. That's I, I have no problem with that. You I know? have no problem. And, yeah. And you can tell the difference between like the chemicalized, you know, and like the fresh. And it's like my wife thinks I'm crazy when we pass a farm. You played like, with different kind of mud pies as a kid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, my 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 job was the same. I when I had uh, my own horse, I had two horses. One tried to kill me all the time, 
And the other one was scared of cars. And they each had their unique personalities. But my job was to muck out the stalls. And I didn't have any problem with it at all. I mean, it's nothing but really processed hay and, oh, yeah. and straw and oats. It's oh, yeah. you know, And you get used to the smell, you know? You, you do. You don't. I never even noticed it. And then later, much, 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 much later, because I rodeoed in the 90s all over the country with a whole bunch of um, professional cowboys and then also uh, actors. Um, uh, I, you know, I, I would get actually happy when we would would get to um, uh, uh, a site uh, where the horses were because the smell, I would love that smell. And everybody else loved the smell too because we were all horse people. Yeah. So I totally understand and your wife, and it's hard if you didn't grow up with it, but exactly. yeah, I just saw that post there about, about other animals, you know, poop. And uh, you're right. Well, the only thing I ever got to muck out was a little box. Oh, <laughs> that's a little different than taking a shovel, <laughs> well, you know, in a huge bucket, <laughs> and, right? You know, and shoveling up your your horse's, um, you know, poop. So yeah. it's a little bit different. But I have I have mucked out many litter boxes in my time. Right. But right now we're just picking up dog poop. That's it. <laughs> you know, it's easy. He's a small dog. <laughs> So, uh, so the question I normally ask, and, uh, you know, I'm probably going to know the answer here, uh, but you know, besides your, your, your career in acting, what do you dork out about? You know, uh, like we've had, uh, you know, uh, some people on, they, they love researching, you know, sunken vessels or, uh, do you yeah. play guitar or, or, or what, what is something that, you know, is uniquely you that you just love that you dork out about? Well, I really dork out about radio. You know, radio plays. I really, as you've heard me go on and on and on and on and on. You know, I really do dork out about that. And um, and I um, I'm a, a fair pianist. I'd say I used to be pretty darn good. I used to compete statewide when I was a kid, and I grew up on classical music. And um, you know, I didn't I didn't grow up on um, really other types of music till much, much, much later because my grandmother was uh, a huge influence on me and she loved classical music. And so therefore I started playing piano at five and, uh, and I started playing a really easy, easy classical music that was just, you know, basically notes and maybe one chord and a simple chord and with, you know, like a, a two finger chord and a uh, three finger actually. And so I can get pretty, pretty dorky about classical music. I can get dorky about actually lots of kinds of music, uh, jazz and, uh, uh, but not progressive jazz, but classical jazz and um, blues. I love old blues and I love um, Irish music being part Irish. I mean, it's pretty obvious. And um, that's why I love music. And uh, I can dork out quite a bit on that and just go into like a trance if I'm listening to something that I really, really like. So I guess those are the things, you know, I don't, I don't dork out on cooking like my friends do. I don't like cooking. Oh God. And um, <laughs> my poor, my poor husband. I love to eat. I hate to cook. <laughs> I, me too. You know, I mean, gosh, I'm really good at choosing a good restaurant and um, mm -hmm. I can cook. And I actually owned a restaurant, if you can believe it. Oh, at no one point with, uh, five other people, and but I never cooked. We we did other things for the restaurant, you know. And then I left it. And um, and I dork out about acting. I am really dorky about acting. I am the dork about acting, and can't talk about it. But um, or pro we can talk about projects. But I I am very dorky about acting and different techniques and different styles and and different people, different actors I admire and. Um, would love to work with and have worked with and can't say who and or what project is so weird to talk like this. Um, but those, but those it are it makes it so we can have a whole nother show when you can talk about it. We yeah, can, but right? it, 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 I yeah. was pretty impressed that we got through almost an hour and a half. And oh my god, I'm so sorry to take we it. couldn't even no, talk no, about right? it. Yeah, and we had That's nothing awesome, to talk actually. about. Like yeah. I, I, in the show, we, were like, we didn't even talk course. about comics. You know, was, we did. Oh my gosh, and I wanted to talk about comics, <laughs> but I guess. You know, we can't do that on this we'll show. Send, we'll send you a link and you can I, find out everything about what we do. 
I would love to see that because I was a huge comic book the idea. fan yep. as a child. And I, 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 I'm in my office right now. You can't see my bookshelf, but I have graphic novels. I love graphic novels. And, um, and I have friends right now. Wow, that's a loud noise. But yeah, was, yeah. I don't, I don't Jar -jar. know. Jar Jar. Jar Jar. It was Jar Jar. <laughs> Sorry, windows open. Oh, is that a bike? Yeah, okay. Yeah, bike going by. Yeah. Okay. Nice. You guys are so Bye, fun. Um, it's been a great pleasure, you know, talking to you. I, I, I do nice. want to just say one more time, HollywoodRadioPlayers.com. I don't know if you have Which a... is in the show notes, I believe. Yep, up yep. Above we do have, have that in the show notes up watching. above and down yep. below. Excellent. And then so you our... just go to the show notes and click right on it. Uh... It'll bring you right there. Good. Oh, and and our too, yeah. YouTube channel, which is just a simpler version, Hollywood Radio Players. And then my own website, as you already know it, LeePurcell.com. You just reminded me I have to update it. And, um, mm -hmm. and, and That's social the hard media. part. Yeah. Oh, I hate updating it. And um, which is, well, I'll go like five years and won't update it. Uh, I don't, I don't do, do it myself. I have somebody do it, but I just don't like it. But, um, and then I have, you know, I'm on all, all social media and Hollywood radio players. We are stick, we are on social media, but we're not very adept at it yet because we just don't have time because we're too busy making the shows. And we actually are looking for someone that um, can work with us on that, uh, a social media person. We need that. But we are on social media. Once in a while we post something, but it's better on the website and it's better on our YouTube channel. That's And the website has our bios and information about us and how we started and so forth. And, and then Michael's and my um, production company is March Hair Production, March Hair Entertainment, sorry. And Jeff went away. I guess he said, well, I'm going to the other he show. I'm there done. There he goes. He's, I'm done. But March Hair Entertainment, oops, there goes Jeff, is our production company, and we do produce Hollywood radio players. So, Sorry, that's me. That's, <laughs> well, listen, I, I'm shocked because I do live in the mountains, like I said, and usually on a, on a Zoom, or, or this is StreamYard, though, maybe it's different. I, I don't do StreamYard that often, um, so it makes me a little bit nervous, like, am I going to get on? And um, then I have to switch my browser to another browser and so forth. But uh, usually my picture freezes at least 10 times during during a Zoom, because not because of Zoom, but because where I live, because the cell towers are just awful. They're awful. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I'm on Do Not Disturb, but my Do Not Disturb runs until 830. Well, we just went past 30, that, and you? my in-laws just called my wife. That's what just happened. Oh, okay. Your phone. I got it. Yeah. yeah. Yep, that's what just happened. So, But Leo, do you think? Yep. Take us yep. out. Yeah, we got to wrap things up. I want to thank everybody for watching this fine evening. For me, just Google me. You'll find me. Uh, you know, uh, could be true, could be not. I'm not going to say which is which. But I run the Dorkening Podcast Network. We got a ton of shows on the network. There's a lot of awesome people doing a lot of awesome stuff. Head on over to thedorkening.com. You can learn more. And uh, I also do a bunch of other shows during the week. Splash Pages Comic Book Club on Tuesdays. Uh, we're about to do Midweek Geeks in uh, less than a half an hour. And, uh, you know, just uh, a bunch of other stuff. Uh, Lee, where do you like people interacting with you on social media? Um, I like it on my Facebook fan page. I'm uh, not on my personal, uh, not on my personal Facebook page because I don't, I don't do that with, with uh, people other than, you know, close, close, close friends and family. It's a very small group. And I know Instagram, I'm trying, I'm on Instagram and I try to remember to post on there. I forget you know it's hard when you have to do a show every month and we're trying to do now every two months because it's just it's taken over our lives in a good way you know in a good way but you know, did you say leo that you do uh the something podcast network uh yeah i run the dorkening podcast network can you send me something on that because yeah we are moving into podcasting oh. and um and so we're all we're interested and, oh, um, do we have some stuff for you? <laughs> Thank, yeah. you. Thank you. Good, good, good. Yeah and, yeah, and and you mentioned you know some uh comic book uh writers as well. We uh have a comic book show that we interview comic creators. So uh okay. you know, I love okay. to connect on that as well. Okay. I'm well we'll talk about that. Yep, yep, totally, yes. totally. We'll talk about that. And um but thank you guys. 
I really appreciate. It's been just a blast. And I don't know how we're an hour and a half went. We were supposed to do an hour. And thank you for the extra time. I really appreciate that. And I appreciate the promotion of Hollywood Radio Players because, you know, it goes to a good cause. And and we'll we'll talk another time when I'm actually, it's not the March Hare Show. That's just the name of our production company somebody posted. It's Hollywood Radio Players. So follow that. You actually can't follow March Hare as a production company. Um, Although eventually, who knows? But uh, yeah, Hollywood radio players follow that. I would really appreciate whoever wants to follow that. And you can like and subscribe, and then you'll get notices when, when we post a new show. Awesome. And we uh, have a bunch of those links in the show notes. And uh, Jar Jar. Hey, I'll keep it short and sweet. Uh, check out Comic Book Lovers Buy, Sell, Trade, and Auction House over on Facebook. You can buy, sell, trade, and auction with thirty or uh, 23,000 other dorks oh. and nerds. And you can also check me out in about a half hour over on Midweek Geeks. There we go. Jeffrey. So very good. I guess I will close this one down. Uh, let's go to uh, stilltoken.com. Everything you need to know about us will be there, including links to all of our past shows. Uh, if you're on Facebook, uh, it's Token with the Dead. Uh, and as far as I go, don't even bother because you'll find more about me on stilltoken.com. I would like to thank Lee for joining us tonight. This has been awesome. It has been a pleasure. And to close it out, I'll try and do what Ben does all the time. Uh, Thank you to our first responders, nurses, firemen, police, all of you people out there. Because if it's not for what you do, we couldn't do what we do. Peace out. Have a good night. Thank you, guys. Thank Thank you. you Thank you.